the show. The champ is here. The oh, Niners man. media <laughs> content creator champ is here. Haven't talked to Brad Graham since he got the title. You know you love him. <laughs> SF Niners. Brad, thank you for joining us. How's it going, guys? Thank you for having me. Looking forward to talking some 49ers football. It's been a while. Yeah, it has it has been a while, Brad. Well, the last time we had you on the show, you had some great nuggets as far as Brandon Ayuk. We know that you are super connected there. So we wanted to ask you, what is the latest on the Brandon Ayuk situation? And I also got a side ask for you because there was something where SF Niners reported uh, a quote from Brandon Ayuk, but it was via Ayuk Daily. Is Ayuk <laughs> Daily a, a, a secret account? What's go, What's going on here with all things Brandon Ayuk right now? Yeah, no, I saw a lot of conversation about the source of that Brandon Ayuk quote. And listen, um, I follow Ayuk Daily. He has about 10K followers on Instagram. So I know who he is. We've chatted okay. before. So okay. he's a good guy. And so I had a direct line of communication and also independently was able to just make sure that did BA really say this and through the back channels was able to confirm this was directly from Brandon Ayuk. And if you missed it, he did say, my home is here. My family is here. Everything I know is here. Mm -hmm. I want to be a 49er beyond this season. And I believe that to be very true. Brad, there's a lot of talk uh, about Brock Purdy and his leadership at camp right now uh, and, and just how it seems like it's on a different level. He has control of the entire practice. I mean, wh what do you hope to see from Brock in terms of improvement for, for this season? Yeah, I think there are multiple areas for Brock Purdy to improve this coming season. Now, obviously, you mentioned it. Leadership is one of those key components because when we're looking at last year's offseason progress process for Brock Purdy, he was throwing a towel around about right now as he was working through his rehab process. So he wasn't out there at OTAs. He wasn't out there at mandatory minicamp. It was actually Trey Lance and Sam Darnold who was leading the crew. And even so, I do believe that even with what Brock Purdy did in his rookie campaign, he was still in a prove it mode. Still, can you be the leader? Can you be the guy heading into year two? And what we saw last year, last season, was clearly Brock Purdy is quarterback one for the San Francisco 49ers. And I think he's been able to take that experience and just absolutely leverage it into this offseason program where it's no ifs, ands, or buts. This is Brock Purdy's team. And one of the things that we've heard about Brock and consistently seen from him is the way he can command the all pros, the all world, George Kittles, Trent Williams, Debo Samuels, Christian McCaffrey's, all those guys. And I think as a 24 year old, he has just absolutely been building. And I think from everything that we've heard out of OTAs and mandatory minicamp is Brock is absolutely the leader of this team. And that's exactly what you want from your quarterback, because the quarterback is de facto leader of the entire team. Talking to Brad Graham of SF Niners. Be sure to follow him on all platforms of social media, at YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of it. Brad, let, let, let's just get your thought, though, before we turn the page on IUK. And I don't know if you're a betting man or not, but whether you are or not, do you think Brandon IUK will get traded? I do not. I, I really do not. I would say... You know, you can't guarantee anything in this league. I, I think we've seen the craziest things happen, especially around the San Francisco 49ers. You think back to the the Jimmy Garoppolo saga when he's off working to the field, right. off to the side field and training camp, and boom, all of a sudden he's on the team. Then he's starting. Yeah. So at that point, I was like, oh, there's no chance Jimmy Garoppolo is returning. So I can't say definitively that he won't be traded, but I would say 99.9%. .9 I do not believe Brandon Ayuk will be traded. I do think based on where we currently stand, and I think within the last week or so, we've seen a lot of dust kicked up. You know, through the media, we've heard TJ Hushmanzada discuss, who's Brandon Ayuk's personal wide receiver coach, and we heard Matt Mayoko discussing the situation as well. And I, I think when we kind of look through it all, I just think that, that they're at a kind of an inflection point in the negotiation. And I think, you know, Timing is always a big crucial factor, at least when we've 
looked at the 49ers getting deals done in the past. You look at Nick Bosa, the holdout that he had, Debo Samuel, uh, and other players as well. Now, the 49ers have signed guys like Christian McCaffrey and Jawan Jennings, which was uh, a nice change of pace. But I really do think that we are in a waiting stage, and I think we're in that part of the negotiation where it's each side looking at each other saying, who's going to cross this line first? And obviously, as we get closer and closer to training camp, that's kind of the deadline that I think we're really looking for. And if anything happens sooner than that, phenomenal. But I think we just want to see Brandon Ayuk in training camp and be able to put this situation behind us so that the 49ers can go out and do what everyone wants them to do, which is go out and win a Super Bowl. And to, and to be clear, you're saying that he will get the extension, not that he'll play on his last deal. You I do believe. I do believe he will get the exception. Okay. Okay. I, I, I don't love the idea of Brandon Ayuk playing on the fifth year option. I, I feel like, and this is just my personal thoughts. Mm -hmm. I feel like it sets kind of a bad precedent right. for all the the top tier talent that they have had and paying that top tier talent. And I understand there are other elements at play: cap, health for the future, all those different types of things. But I think from where the 49ers currently stand, Brandon Ayuk and his team currently stand, there is room to get this done. I think it's just a matter of time. So, Brad, if, if the Niners are going to keep Ayuk and, and you mentioned, you know, Juwan Jennings kind of getting uh, a little a little payday there um, and he's going to stick around. I mean, if, if that's going to be the case and they have Ayuk and they have Debo and they have Juwan Jennings, what's the role that you see for uh, rookie uh, Ricky Pearsall this season? You know, I, I'm pretty excited about that because what we've heard so far with Brock Purdy and Ricky Pearsall coming out of minicamp and OTAs is that there's already a natural connection there. I think it was Matt Barrows who even called it prolific uh, with how it looked uh, during the offseason program. So I do think that there's always an acclimation period for wide receivers in Kyle Shanahan's system. I remember Debo Samuel talking about it at the Super Bowl in 2019. He's saying like, I don't know. I didn't know at one point if I was ever going to see the field because of the complexities of Kyle Shanahan's scheme and how difficult it is and just how it had his brain in a blender. So that's one aspect of it. Ricky Pearsall obviously has to manage the system, the scheme. And then if he can build that rapport on top of that with Brock Purdy, that will be his best chance to be able to get on the field. But the pecking order, we know if it's Brandon Ayuk is paid. It's B.A., it's Jawan, it's Debo, and it's really hard to see that fourth guy make a huge impact, especially, I believe, when Jawan Jennings, who's the third wide receiver, almost MVP at the Super Bowl, had about 230 receiving yards last season for the entirety of the year. So we just know that the 49ers got their bell count CMC under contract. We do imagine that they are still going to continue to be a run first team. The biggest thing that I'm looking for is to see if Kyle Shanahan, with the amount of weapons that he has and the trust that he has in Brock Purdy, they open it up a little bit more. And that allows for more three wide receiver sets, more four, four wide receiver sets where Ricky Pearsall is on the field with those other three. And if that is the case, just think about, that being your fourth, yeah. uh, sixth option, if yeah. you add Kittle and yep. CMC into the mix and who he's going to be going up against, there is a path forward. But again, just using history uh, and how wide receivers have acclimated under Kyle, it, I would imagine it will take some time. But it also depends how much does Kyle really want to see Ricky Pearsall on the field, because I think that will be the ultimate determination of how much we see from him as a rookie. Talking to Brad Graham, SF Niners. We got one more for you, then a then a quick one, Brad. But this this is what I this is what I have to ask because you're bringing up we got Ricky and and you got six options out there. Okay, we've talked about the Brandon Ayuk side of this, but the Debo side of this is it actually possible for the Niners after this season, regardless of what they do, to go into next season with the all these dudes, the Avengers of a wide receiver room. I mean, what I've been seeing is that if IU does get the bag and get that extension, that would mean 
goodbye and thank you for your service for Debo. Do you see a path where everybody stays after this season? I think it would be really challenging to keep everyone around because as we do know, the main topic of discussion this time next year will be Brock Purdy's contract extension, which will be probably top five if he just uh, just duplicates what he did last year. Right. If he does any better, we might be talking even higher up that ranking. But in regards to Debo Samuel, I do think this is a – I think Debo Samuel – based on the way that I've seen him kind of engaging with social media, the way I've seen some of his close fan, uh, friends and family members engaging on social media, they're absolutely looking at this as a contract year. Mm -hmm. We do know that Debo Samuel doesn't have any guaranteed money beyond his contract after this season. So I do believe that they are viewing this Debo Samuel, and this is my perspective, is that they are viewing this as a contract season. And so whether that means a new contract with the 49ers or a contract somewhere else, I, I think, like I said previously, it's going to be really challenging, right? Because we've also heard whispers from Jeremy Fowler of the NFL Network or ESPN that Trent Williams potentially wants yep. a pay. Everybody, in. Brad, I got to get various awards. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we got Alan and Chris yeah, trying right. to get on this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right there behind yeah, you guys. You know, know. If anybody, <laughs> come on. So everyone's trying to cash in, right? And mm -hmm. why wouldn't you? It's the name of the game. So I just think it comes down to the 49ers being really strategic about this. But I do think that based on what we heard this offseason, Debo Samuel acknowledged the trade conversations that happened throughout the draft. I do believe he's looking at it as a one year at a time and what he can do this year could potentially leverage himself into his next opportunity, even if it's not with the San Francisco 49ers. Brad Graham, SF Niners. Thank you so much as always, Brad. Brad, just a yes or no. This is all we have time for. Nate's yelling at me right now. Are you worried about the Madden curse with Christian McCaffrey? No, I'm not. The hey. 49ers have been cursed enough, so <laughs> I, I can't I can't imagine the, the Madden cover is going to change anything. There you go. Brad Graham, SF Niners. Be, be sure to check him out. YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Everywhere you want to be. Thank you so much, Brad. Can't wait to talk to you soon. We needed more time, man. We got to 